Dead Man's Party. Written and read by Steve Parker. Good evening, said the voice. It was quite a pleasant voice, though upper class in that archaic British way. Not at all bone-chilling, nor grave-sodden, nor resonant of stone grating on stone. If anything, it seemed a bit cheeky and cheerful, like an uncle with a pocket full of tricks to delight and slightly terrify young minds. Good evening, it said again. My name is Nigel Deadman, and I am a dead man. The two guests looked at one another, slightly puzzled but disarmed by the charm of the figure before them. No need to be frightened, said Nigel. I'm not in the habit of frightening people myself, though I do have an old chain around here somewhere. <laughs> he chortled at his own joke, which the guests did not, as it wasn't at all funny. Some jokes require so much backstory that they're only amusing in the head of the teller of the joke, which doesn't help much if you're the one hearing it. I suppose you are wondering, continued Nigel, why you are here. Well, I have to tell you that you have come under the auspices of chapter 3 verse 7 subsection 12 of the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, the Book of the Dead, which is not at all what you have likely heard it to be. Nigel paused, waiting for questions. The guests looked at him, open-mouthed and blank-faced, with no evidence of even a single thought, let alone a question, coming forth. Nigel looked a little disappointed and carried on. The Necronomicon Ex Mortis, or Necmo for short, hmm? yeah. was thought to be a book written by a madman detailing the art of communing with the dead, but this, as I previously intimated, is not quite the case. No, said a small, shadowy figure to Nigel's left. Oh, shush, shushed Nigel. The Necmo is actually a book written by the dead, detailing the art of communing with madmen, you see? Eh, <laughs> guffawed the small shadowy figure to Nigel's left. Do be quiet, admonished Nigel. The guests looked on confusedly, not at all enlightened by the interchange. My colleague here, said Nigel, indicating the small shadowy figure to his left, is quite right to scoff, however, as the Necmo does not necessarily require the communicateer to be mad, though as some not very amusing posters in particularly boring workplaces will mention, it helps. <laughs> the small shadowy figure to Nigel's left grinned, as if waiting for laughter to burst forth from the guests but its small, shadowy face fell after a second when no laughter was apparent. It seems that you two good people, said Nigel, waving a languid hand towards the waiting guests, have recently, and rather foolishly, I might add, taken to walking through graveyards. Tat, tat, tutted the small, shadowy figure to Nigel's left. And what's more, continued the dead man, you have done so at midnight. The small shadowy figure to Nigel's left gasped a little over dramatically. <gasps> On All Hallows' Eve, no less, concluded Nigel. The guests looked at each other blankly. Halloween, elucidated Nigel. The small, shadowy figure to Nigel's left rolled its eyes, bemoaning the poor arcane education of modern mortals. The thing is, said Nigel, you have rather trespassed on an occasion not meant for your kind. An occasion for those of us who have left your realm behind, as it were. Nigel waved a hand, indicating himself and the small shadowy figure to his left, who was now grinning widely, as if anticipating something either glorious or dreadful, depending on whether you were watching it or experiencing it firsthand. Have you ever heard of a band called Oingo Boingo, by any chance? asked Nigel. The guests shook their heads. 
A little before your time, I would guess. A shame, but uh, there you go. The interesting thing about Oingo Boingo is that they are all members of our little society, not yours. The guests looked not at all enlightened. They are dead, you see, intoned Nigel. The small, shadowy figure to Nigel's left grinned even wider, and its eyes took on a low but distinct red glow. They really did try to make the rules very clear, if your kind had listened. This, you see, is a dead man's party. In the background, a low throbbing had started, more felt than heard. You really should have waited for an invitation, you know, admonished Nigel. As it is, you have come rather unprepared, which presents some problems. The small shadowy figure to Nigel's left, now grinning so widely it was a wonder its head didn't fall apart, and eyes glowing almost too bright to look at, seemed to expand and swell not only up, but out. The problems are threefold. First, you have no invitation, as I already said. This is not an unassailable issue in itself. Second, and this is a little larger, you do not have the traditional entry fee. Nigel leaned closer as the not-so-small shadowy figure to his left continued to grow, now towering over Nigel and the guests. Two coins, you see, one for each eye. The guests clutched at each other in fear as the now quite large shadowy figure grew so much that it blotted out the lights of the city on the edge of the cemetery. And the final problem, the really serious one, you might say, is that you are alive. This will not do. Oingo Boingo made it quite clear. Leave your body at the door, they said. Have you really never heard the song? The guests could not answer, but merely cowered in fear, quaking as they stared up at the enormous shadowy figure to Nigel's left. No matter, it's a little late to look it up now, and you will hear it tonight anyway, I'm sure. Don't take too long, he said, clearly speaking to the gargantuan shadowy figure to his left. Everything is about to start. <laughs> Nigel giggled as he sauntered away, and the guests blubbered incoherently as the terrifying shadowy figure bent down and filled their world with darkness.